Well, howdy! The spirit of Dirty Dan Harris returning again to tell you another tantalizing story of the history of Bellingham, Washington. Behind me is Depot Market on Railroad Avenue in the heart of Bellingham, where from April through December, farmers and artisans offer their wares for sale. It was here in 1892 that the Bellingham Bay and British Columbia Railroad built the first depot. But let's go back a ways and talk about how the railroad came to these parts. The politics, the real estate speculation, and the people of the time including me, Daniel Jefferson Harris, inappropriately, I think, nicknamed Dirty Dan. Bellingham Bay was so named by Captain George Vancouver of the British Navy while exploring the northwest coast back in 1792. Sir William Bellingham, that's how the Brits pronounce it, was one of the voyage backers. The natural abundance of this area, the dense virgin forests from the bay shore to the Cascade Mountains, plentiful salmon in the bay and creeks, viable water power, and a deep water port drew folks from far and wide. In 1852, before statehood, settlers arrived here and soon there was a mill at Whatcom Falls. The site is now called Maritime Heritage Park in the center of Old Town. The city of Watcom, Nooksack tribe name meaning noisy water, was soon created from the first land claims of Henry Roeder and Edward Eldridge and soon grew into a bustling lumber mill town. Developing alongside of Watcom, the city of Seaholm, named for the chief of the Claylum tribe, was home to the Bellingham Bay Coal Company, which opened in 1854. Seaholm, now downtown Bellingham, was renamed New Watcom, which joined with the city of Watcom and became an even larger New Watcom in 1891. In 1901, it became Watcom. The name of Bellingham was given to the stretch of land along the bay near what is now Boulevard Park. It was settled in 1853, but never prospered. Now Fairhaven, that's my bailiwick. I purchased a 43-acre claim for $53.75 and named it Fair Haven on Harris Bay. I platted the town site of Fair Haven and became a real estate magnate, built a hotel, and made lots of money before moving to Southern California. The cities of Fairhaven and Watcom merged in 1903, and being competitors, the folks in each city didn't want to lose their identity to the other, so they compromised and called the new city Bellingham. By the early 1900s, the fishing, mining, and lumber industries defined this area, and rail transportation would prove key to progress and the fortune of Bellingham Bay. 
Much of the business activity of the time was focused on the solicitation and development of the early railroads. That allowed local industry to thrive and expand into the county. In the 1870s, the Northern Pacific Railroad was expanding northward from the Columbia River. The Canadian Pacific, in the 1880s, was expanding westward, building the first Canadian transcontinental line. The Great Northern Railroad started its expansion westward to Puget Sound from Haver, Montana in 1890. The Puget Sound terminus had yet to be decided. Land speculation between Seattle and other Puget Sound towns, including Fairhaven, continued unabated. Between the years 1883 and 1892, four railroads were incorporated in Whatcom County. The Bellingham Bay and British Columbia Railway Company the Fairhaven and Southern Railway Company, the Bellingham Bay and Eastern Railway Company, and the Bellingham Bay Railway and Navigation Company, which was purchased by the Fairhaven and Southern before laying a rail. The Bellingham Bay and British Columbia Railway Company was incorporated by Pierre B. Cornwall and Associates in 1883 to connect Watcom to the Canadian Pacific Railroad to the north. The Bellingham Bay Coal Company, also owned by Cornwall and Company, had closed the mines in what is now downtown Bellingham in 1870. Cornwall's company owned 3,700 acres of land encircling the city of Whatcom and intended to further open its extensive coal lands in Whatcom County and ship coal by rail and water. In 1889, the first locomotive to operate on Bellingham Bay was the D.O. Mills, engine number one of the BB and BC, even though the roadbed only extended three and a half miles. Clearing a right-of-way was a formidable job, as it could involve cutting virgin timber with trunks up to ten feet in diameter. As the BB and BC moved from the shore inland, often large cuts needed to be made. The new railroad had raised economic hopes and fueled a wave of land speculation along Bellingham Bay, but construction stalled and eventually restarted in March 1891. Seven years after the first efforts were initiated, a 23-mile line from the Seaholm Wharf to Sumas at the Canadian border was completed. A 2% grade was run from the Seaholm Wharf up to and extending through what later became the yard and shops on the street now known as Railroad Avenue. The route crossed Whatcom Creek near what is now Construction Supply climbed a two and three quarter percent grade through the Sunnyland neighborhood to Summit and over the present Sunset Square before dropping down to the Dewey Valley area. With stops at Van Wyck and Central, the line proceeded past Wall and Goshen, crossed the Nooksack at Everson, and stretched out to its northern terminus at Sumas, where it joined with a branch of the Canadian Pacific Railway. By the last day of April, 1891, two trains per day were run out to Sumas regularly. Along the road was a brickyard that contracted for 63 cars to haul its product to New Watcom 
and one logging camp with 30 million feet of logs for Bellingham Bay. The arrival of the first Canadian Pacific Railroad train on May 28, 1891 was quite an event. Thousands had gathered to celebrate. The crowds cheered, the bands played, and the whistles of nearby mills seemed to go crazy. Overzealous firemen sprayed arches of water over the arriving train and caused many onlookers to be drenched. By June 5, 1891, construction began on Railroad Avenue and soon a turntable, roundhouse, sand house, and passenger depot were completed. Next door to the depot, the BB and BC Hotel was built to accommodate travelers. Another early railroad, the Bellingham Bay Railway and Navigation Company, was incorporated by Eugene Canfield in 1883. Canfield had surveyors working north and south from Bellingham Bay. He wanted to run a line north from Watcom through Ferndale and Blaine to connect with the new Westminster Southern Railroad of Canada and south to Cedro Woolley and the iron and coal mines in the upper Skagit. There was quite a spirited rivalry between Canfield and Cornwall as to who would be the first to get their railroad up and running. There were many disputes about right-of-way. Tideland claims and lawsuits abounded. Canfield got pledges from many community leaders, including Henry Roeder and yours truly, Dan Harris but he was unable to secure an outside loan and was forced to sell out to Nelson Bennett in July 1889. The name was changed to the Fairhaven and Southern Railway Company. Today, trains of Burlington Northern Santa Fe and Amtrak run along parts of Canfield's original right-of-way. When Bennett arrived in Fairhaven in 1888, he said he was going to construct a railroad to his Skagit River coal mine. He had been developing a coal mine four miles northeast of Cedro Woolley. The importance of coal preceded that of timber, as coal was the primary fuel for heating, as well as creating steam for electricity, locomotives, and ships. Bennett teamed up with investor C.X. Larrabee and bought my town site for $75,000. After that, they capitalized the Fairhaven Land Company in 1888 and then sold the town site to the land company for $250,000. Such was the business of land speculation in those days. On December 22, 1888, Bennett announced the formation of the Fairhaven and Southern Railroad. Construction of the railroad started and grading began in April 1889. Bennett hired as his chief engineer J.J. Donovan. Donovan was trained as a civil engineer and Bennett knew him from his work in Montana on the Northern Pacific. On April 5, 500 men were working on the roadbed that stretched 30 miles towards Cedro Woolley. The new F&S Railroad followed Padden Creek through Happy Valley to Lake Samish and Jarman Prairie. The sailing ship Charles E. Moody, loaded with steel rails, arrived at Fairhaven from Tacoma on Saturday, April 20th. 
The first rails were laid July 15th. The first 30 miles of track reached the Skagit River and the line was operating to that point by fall. Hold it. Don't move. Two 460 standard gauge locomotives from Schenectady, New York were put into service. The passenger cars were painted olive green and had a distinctive broad blue stripe and were truly deluxe with reclining cushion seats. The first F&S train pulled into Cedro on Christmas Eve, 1889. By February 7, 1890, four trains daily were running between Fairhaven and Cedro. Meanwhile, the Seattle and West Coast Railroad was being built from Seattle northward to Cedro. The Seattle and Northern Railroad was building east from Anacortes to the upper Skagit Valley, where they met the Fairhaven and Southern at the town site of Woolley near Cedro, forming a 100-foot triangle. Eventually, a depot was built in the middle of the triangle. The Great Northern Railroad bought a controlling interest in the Fairhaven and Southern and the coal mine at Cokedale, a case of the big Great Northern fish gobbling up the enterprising local minnow, the Fairhaven and Southern. Work to complete the line north through Blaine was started in earnest, and to speed completion, crews worked from both directions. Crossing the Tide Flats on Bellingham Bay was a gigantic engineering feat that required installation of 1,800 piles amidst ebb and flood tides and weather. On February 14, 1891, the first train from Seattle to Blaine traveled on the Seattle-Montana tracks as far as Cedro, where it joined the Fairhaven and Southern trackage, taking it into Fairhaven. From Fairhaven, the train headed north and crossed the long trestle over Bellingham Bay on its way to the Canadian border at Blaine. A depot was constructed in Fairhaven to serve the new railroad. Its name transitioned from Fairhaven and Southern to Seattle and Montana till finally it officially became the Great Northern Railroad. After filling in the land and relocating the tracks from the tidal flats in 1902, Great Northern built a brick depot with a wood shingled roof at the foot of D Street in Watcom. A little over 20 years later, the depot burned down and a single story brick depot was constructed in its place. Great Northern Railroad utilized the station until 1969, at which point Burlington Northern began operations from here. In the early 1980s, the station was still used for passenger service by Amtrak. Currently, this structure houses the switching operations for Burlington Northern's North District. Lake Whatcom, a scenic, heavily forested area just three miles from the shores of Bellingham Bay, was still remote to local inhabitants because of the thick forest and heavy undergrowth, not to mention an elevation gain of 300 feet. Logging and mining were major activities around the lake in the late 1800s, the Blue Canyon coal mine was located 800 feet above the lake, a short distance from the shore. 
The coal was bituminous and of the highest quality. Coal was moved from the mine to the lakefront on an elevated tramway. The problem was just what would be the best way to get the coal from this location to Bellingham Bay where it could be loaded on ships and sent south to the lucrative markets in California. Steamboats regularly pushed barges of coal to the northwest corner of the lake where it was hauled by wagon down to the bay at New Watka. The distance from the mine to the bay was only 13 miles and it was all down grade. The Bellingham Bay and Eastern Railway Company was incorporated in December 1891 to operate between Blue Canyon Mine along Lake Whatcom to Bellingham Bay. J.J. Donovan served as construction engineer. The Fairhaven and New Whatcom Street Railway already had track leading from Lake Whatcom into New Whatcom so the Bellingham Bay and Eastern secured trackage rights over their line in order to reach the wharf at Bellingham Bay. A log dump and a boat landing on the northern shore of Lake Whatcom at Silver Beach were constructed to offload logs and coal onto rail cars. A log hoist was constructed to transfer logs from barges from the many log camps on the lake to railway flat cars, then transported across town on the street railway tracks. The logs were then dumped into the boom at the large bunker at the bay from an elevation of 50 feet. It was quite a sight to see those huge logs splashing into the bay. Coal was dumped from the rail cars into the coal bunker then loaded onto ships to be transported to Vancouver, Seattle, and San Francisco. The Bellingham Bay and Eastern Railroad built a new line in 1889 from Lake Watcom to reach its wharf on the bay, as the trolley line they had been using had sharp curves and steep grades. In 1901, the Bellingham Bay and Eastern extended its main line 1.32 miles along the waterfront from New Watcom to Fairhaven. The line was built to serve the growing industries on the bay that eventually included the world's largest salmon cannery and the world's largest shingle mill, both located on the Fairhaven waterfront. The BB&E also extended its line 16.2 miles to Wickersham on the shore of Lake Whatcom, going through Blue Canyon and Park, then skirting Mirror Lake before arriving at Wickersham where it connected to the Northern Pacific Railroad, a transcontinental line. In 1901, the Lake Whatcom Logging Company established the Larson Lumber Company, which operated a mill on an 80-acre tract of land just south of Silver Beach. In 1898, a new logging route called the Skagit Line was built from Park at the head of Lake Whatcom south to Alger, five and a half miles distance, where it connected to the Fairhaven and Southern. The Lake Watcom Logging Company was formed by Donovan and Partners to operate on this line. In 1904, the company owned 22,000 acres at the south end of the lake. They used skid roads to take logs to the lake using steam donkeys to drag the logs from the woods to the yard and then from the yard to the lake. Having completed the railroad from Seaholm to Sumas in 1891, the Bellingham Bay and British Columbia Railway had grand plans to expand into eastern Washington to Spokane. This meant crossing the Cascades at Mount Baker. 
A national depression in the 1890s had delayed the project for 10 years, but construction finally began in January 1901. The 22-mile extension began in Sumas, climbed a 3% grade through Sar Creek Canyon, then dropped to the Columbia Valley through Virgin Forests to Kendall, where it turned east, paralleling the North Fork of the Nooksack River, till it reached Cornell, later changed to Glacier. Most of the trestles on the line were made from timber harvested from the right-of-way and milled at the Bellingham Bay Improvement Company on the bay in New Watcom. An exception was a large steel bridge built in Sar Creek Canyon. After conducting numerous surveys to extend the line across the Cascades, J.J. Donovan decided that the project was unfeasible because of the cost of tunneling and an uncertain future of the railroad. The Glacier Line, as it was called, terminated at Glacier, but many logging spurs were built along the line. The loggers could now cut timber far from a stream and build a spur to the nearest point of the main line. A log train often consisted of as many as 30 cars. In 1903, after extending lines to Glacier and then Linden, the BB and BC was one of the busiest short-line railroads in America. With nine locomotives. Ninety-three flat cars and twenty box cars. The next year, the company started building fifty new box cars in their car shops on Railroad Avenue. The lumber industry was booming at this time, and BB and BC was moving lumber and shingles by box car to their wharf on the bay to be shipped far and wide. The BB and BC built over 70 spurs to various logging camps, mills, and businesses, including the Bellingham Bay Brewery, which operated from 1902 to 1916 at the site now occupied by Platt Electric. Beer was transported in unique insulated cars built in the BB and BC shops. Railroad Avenue served as the main freight yard for the BB and BC for many years. Cars were loaded and unloaded and freight trains were assembled in the yard that occupied the wide avenue. A double header was used to move long trains up the grade, leaving Bellingham going north. In addition to hauling freight, the BB and BC had passenger coaches and combination passenger, mail, and baggage cars on their lines to Linden, Sumas, and Glacier. In 1909, the railroad purchased a self-propelled passenger car, named the Kulshan, the Indian name for Mount Baker. The gasoline-powered motor car looked like a submarine vessel traveling on wheels. The 250-horsepower motor could travel 60 miles per hour on level ground and had many creature comforts for the passengers. The motor car made two trips daily to Sumas 
Whatcom County's homegrown railroad, the Bellingham Bay and British Columbia, was sold to the large national railroad, the Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, and Pacific in 1912, and operated under the name of Bellingham and Northern until 1918, when the name changed to the Milwaukee Road. The Bellingham extension of the Milwaukee Road system gave it a direct connection with Canada at Sumas, enabling the company to haul freight from British Columbia south through Bellingham. Since the Great Northern owned the right-of-way and track south of Bellingham, the Milwaukee barged their cars down Puget Sound to connect with home rails south in Seattle. This lasted until 1956, when the Milwaukee Road reached an agreement with the Great Northern Railroad to move their freight south from Bellingham to Everett on their tracks. Over the years, train wrecks occasionally occurred on the local lines. One wreck in 1911 involved a BB and BC passenger train returning a contestant to Bellingham from Glacier in the first Mount Baker Marathon. The train was derailed by a bull, which enabled another contestant to win the race. The winner was brought back in a modified Model T, driven by U Deal. In 1916, a Bellingham and Northern freight train collided head-on with a work train near Cornwall Park, severely damaging the locomotives, but the crew managed to jump to safety. By the 1930s, the Bellingham Division of the Milwaukee Road had settled down to work as a rural branch operating two trains daily, except Sunday. An important source of revenue to the Bellingham Division was the weekly rock train. Powered by two locomotives, it left Bellingham in the morning to Limestone Junction, seven miles east of Sumas. In a day, 30 or more cars of oil was delivered to the Columbia Cement Plant on the bluffs of Bellingham Bay. The line kept busy serving the pulp mill, plywood plant, and cold storage facilities. A popular Bellingham Christmas tradition was a Milwaukee train delivering Santa to a welcoming crowd on Railroad Avenue. Locals were proud of the first diesel on the Bellingham branch of the Milwaukee Road in December 1952. As old growth timber resources dwindled, the Culshin branch was abandoned in 1943. Branch after branch of the line was closed down over the years as lumber mills were closed around Bellingham. The Milwaukee served Whatcom County until it went bankrupt in 1980. Today, most of the track is gone, but some remains along the waterfront. BNSF operates the trains along the coastal route north to Canada. Falls Park, standing on an abandoned trestle built in 1916 by the Bellingham and Northern Railroad. The railroads played a pivotal role in the history and development of Whatcom County. Much of the old rail right-of-ways now provide trails for recreation and relaxation. The Hertz Trail on the north shore of Lake Whatcom was once the line that the Bellingham and Eastern used to haul logs down to the bay. 
The Interurban Trail to Larrabee Park, south of Fairhaven, and the Railroad Trail from Blodell Donovan Park to Memorial Park. That's all, folks. Train, I'm on, they won't know.